Hey, it's JB. Welcome back. We are on to Motion in One Dimension Part 2, in which we are going to discuss the five magical kinematic equations for constant acceleration. The five kinematic equations start with the definition of average velocity and instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. Again, so we're going to use, uh, I'm going to leave off the directional subscripts. You can add as many of those as you want later. But in terms of V bar, that is the average velocity. I'll use the other symbol for those that prefer that too. Uh, but we define this as delta x over delta t. If you're talking about vertical, of course, it would be delta y over delta t. Uh, another way to express this, x initial or x final minus x initial. And that's over t final minus t initial. Whenever you have a delta, it's always final minus initial. Now, if we want to define instantaneous velocity, that's how fast you're going at one instant of time. So we can't have a big old delta t like a second or a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second or even a ten thousandth of a second. We've got to get that down as small as we can. So how small can that be? It's an infinitesimal. So here's how we write that. Instantaneous velocity, which we simply express as v, is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero, so the time gets smaller and smaller and smaller, of delta x over delta t. Now you can express that in calculus, not required for the AP Physics 1 or 2 students, but with calculus we just write that as dx dt, where this d kind of represents a very, very teensy-weensy delta. In fact, it's sm so small that it's infinitesimally small. So there is our definition of instantaneous velocity or speed. I would like to, at this point, remind you that the speed and velocity are different things. If you start right here, for example, if you start right here and end up, that's point A, and you end up over here, point B, your displacement vector, this is your displacement vector. Whoops, right about there. That's your displacement vector right there from A to B. Uh, delta R is the general symbol for displacement in two dimensions. However, uh, what if you decided to take, what if you had taken the path that went this way? So notice that if you did this delta R and some time delta T, your average velocity, which only cares about your displacement, would be less in magnitude than your average speed if you took that path. So we got to be very careful to distinguish displacement from distance and speed from velocity. They're two different things. Next up we go on to uh, the definition of acceleration. Now uh, typically we're going to have constant acceleration so our acceleration is going to be the average acceleration, both going to be the same thing. So A is going to be defined as delta V over delta T. Now in the case where we uh, don't have constant acceleration, uh, then the instantaneous acceleration more specifically is the limit as delta T approaches zero of delta V over delta t again. Now in calculus we express this as dv dt. Our next equation is Merton's rule. Merton's rule is a great way to find the average velocity for constant acceleration only. It only works for constant acceleration. And Merton's rule for constant acceleration is simply the average velocity is equal to v initial plus v final. No, it's not, it's not in the subtraction divided by 2. It's not divided by time. It's divided by 2. You're actually taking a, an average of two distinct values. And the reason that works is because if you are graphing v versus t and you have a changing velocity but it's at a constant acceleration, that means a straight line, um, your average velocity is going to be um, right there, halfway 
along that line. And the reason that that uh, actually works is that if you're going to find the distance traveled, you've got to find the area under the curve, right? So here's your area under the curve. Or you can just take the average velocity, which is this value right here, and you can find the area, just assuming an average velocity, a constant velocity, you just find the area under that curve. And uh, of course, it might be clear here that the area under this line is exactly the same as the area under uh, that we just drew, uh, because that even though we, we gain this part, but we lose that part. So this is uh, why it works, because the distance traveled uh, would be the same if you went at this average velocity, which happens to be halfway between the initial velocity and the final velocity for a time t. There's Merton's rule right there. So next up, uh, we're going to go on to the granddaddy equation, which I call it that because it's kind of the granddaddy of them all. Uh, it can be derived from the other three equations that we've already mentioned. Uh, and you can look back at the honors physics videos if you want to see that derivation. However, I'm not going to do it here, but the granddaddy equation is this. X equals, X final equals X naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. Now the way, uh, what I like to do is I'll put the X naught on this side making it x minus x naught, uh, which I can just express as delta x. So delta x, if you're writing it like that, will just be v naught t plus one half a t squared. All I did was I moved x naught over here, x minus x naught, hey, that's just delta x. That's the granddaddy equation. The grand mammy equation, uh, of course, we must have gender equality. Uh, the grand mammy equation is this one v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a x minus x naught. This one also, as well as the granddaddy equation, is constant acceleration only because it's derived from the, also from the last four equations. Uh, I like to write this one as follows, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Uh, just a little bit neater. Uh, it must be the delta there, though. It's not just your x final. That's all for this lecture, and I will see you next time. Until then, it's JB Free signing off, knowing that physics is easy when you do it freestylistically. See you next time.